Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Athletic Definition, Merry Fitness Extravaganza. This is day 22 of 31. Ah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Everyone tuning in on the simulcast uh, and also in the broadcast. People joining in the studio. I'm sure you can hear that rain in the background. It is a rare treat for us here in Southern California. According to the song, it never warned you. Well, today it is raining, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to come outside, hear some rain in the background, and talk about fitness and an underrated workout. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, also today, uh, for those of you watching the stream, I will show you the outfit of the day before we get started. And uh, today I'm just wearing classic Santa, Santa hat. And I'm also preparing the fortune cookie. So give me one second here. And the fortune cookie here on Fireside is basically a clickable link. And I'm just basically putting my website on there, which is coachraisely.com. Uh, but if you want to find me on any social media, you can under the same name. On the website, you can set up a free 30-minute uh, consultation with me. Or I have a bunch of affiliates that I work with, people that I, you know, I either use their products or have used their products. And uh, you can go get discounts, such as uh, the Goat Fuel uh, by uh, Jerry Rice, uh, who was here on Fireside. Or you can get a discount on the Webby, which is uh, an agility ladder, which I demonstrated here on Fireside, created by a former fighter in the UFC, Jason um, Doom. And also, I have a discount to, if you're looking to run a marathon, that's always uh, something that a lot of people uh, may have. And LA Marathon's already, like, in mind. LA Marathon's already in March. So you're looking at roughly maybe 60-day training. Um, for some people, that might be too little. Uh, so the OC Marathon, which is Orange County, it is in May. And it is going to be returning to live racing. I will be there. I will be running. I'm not sure what marathon it will be, but I'm at currently 55. So we'll see at the time... Uh, how many marathons I have completed. I'll definitely be doing LA Marathon again, going for, what, 16 consecutive LA Marathons. Um, and that'll be this March. And as I mentioned, the outfit of the day is a bunch of candy canes. This is a short sleeve shirt. And then this jacket is really nice and warm. But I really doubt it's real, uh, what, cheap skin inside. But regardless, it's very, very warm. So that is a... Merry Fitness outfit of the day. Uh, and so today I wanted to talk about an underrated workout. It's probably one of the most underrated. It has a lot of benefits. I see people doing it. And maybe some people would definitely need to step up their game. Some people, if that's all you can do, that's great. Mm -hmm. But um, let me, right now it's the time of year where basically a lot, a lot's going on. And, uh, Maybe you have some grand plans of getting into shape for 2022, and, and that's great. Do it. Uh, my recommendation is uh, keep them simple uh, because complexity is the enemy of execution. So if you keep a workout simple, you have a better chance of completing it. And I know a lot of people may not consider walking an exercise, but I would say it's definitely underrated. It has a lot of benefits, and uh, you know, for you men that uh, are very macho and, and you know can never can never see uh, no one can see you crying. You can always just you know walk out in the rain and go for a walk. And Charlie Chaplin uh, said, "No one can see you crying in the rain." So there's a good alternative for you, or you could just tell people uh, your eyes are sweaty. Either one. I don't have that problem. I'm okay with saying I cry. Um, so yeah, let's talk about a couple of different ways of walking. Uh, one is just the basic going for a walk. Uh, I see a lot of people in the corporate world doing it during lunch. And those are the people that I wish uh, were in the audience to come up or leave me some questions. Now, if that's the only time you have uh, to do it, great. Uh, but if you could add a little bit more, I would highly recommend it. Even though I'm saying it has a lot of benefits, I just see a lot of people kind of walking with friends now, and maybe you're just paying attention more to the conversations and actually 
walking and uh, getting getting into exercise. Uh, you know, some walking is better than no walking, and uh, you know, walking can can and does have a lot of benefits and may have a lot of additional benefits. Uh, and I have to say that because everyone's different. Everyone has injuries. Uh, I, you know, I have to kind of speak just in general, but you know, just it's just good for regular weight health. You know, if you're not doing any sort of activity, uh, it's just great to either. You're probably not going to lose weight on that. You're going to have to do something, you know, to burn more fat. But, you know, depending on, I guess, how much you eat and everything else, it's a great way to maintain. It also has a bunch of, like, benefits of, like, prevention. And it can include things of high blood pressure and, and diabetes and heart disease. Uh, and it also can help uh, as well with cardiovascular and uh, strengthen muscles and bones and improve some endurance, especially if you're living the sanitary lifestyle. So let's say you've never worked out in your life before. You want to start working out. 2022 is right around the corner. And you already have some program. Maybe you already have some some coach, some gym person. I, I hope they're good. I hope uh, you do it. If you're struggling, try adding walking. Just that's it. Try adding walking. Um, and you may be surprised like how just getting the momentum going, basically, it's going to help you set yourself up to win more because now you're starting to feel better, maybe even look better. And then that's just going to have you go down this, this rabbit hole of, well, what about what I eat? And what about if I do this? And what about if I sleep more? And then you just kind of start learning more. But you need the momentum. So keep it simple, as I mentioned uh, uh, before. If, if you keep it too, too complex, then, you know, complexity is the enemy of execution. And that you don't want that to stop your progress. The other one is if, if you heard any of my, what, 60 plus uh, podcast episodes, uh, which are all available everywhere, you can go ahead and check them out. Um, is uh, I talk a lot about walking backwards. And walking backwards is, is uh, a lot of benefits. In fact, I would say now um, because of uh, maybe the, the whole movement, and it's a small movement, but uh, it, it's a movement with Ben Patrick and him, and him like talking so much about the benefits of walking backwards. Uh, a lot of more studies are being done on the benefits, but you know, studies have been done. And uh, as you get older, I've mentioned this, it just helps improve your coordination. Um, so you don't have to worry about like falling, which is a, something that you definitely have to worry about uh, more as you get older. And a lot of people break their hips. You definitely don't want to do that. Plus, uh, if you have any sort of knee issue, you know, runner's knee, uh, from football, from jiu-jitsu, you can barely do anything. Walking backwards is probably the most simplest thing you can start doing to uh, get some blood flowing, get some strength in the knee. Uh, because when, as soon as you start walking backwards, you're placing knees over toes, and that is beneficial. Um, it adds variety to your workout. If you're already like working out, try adding that as a warm up. Uh, try adding uh, resistance. Uh, try adding, uh, you know, uh, a sled. If you have a sled, if you don't, if you have a driver and someone really careful, you can even use a car, put it in a neutral. Um, I would probably not recommend that one if you're not an adult and not really ser serious about training, you're just trying to make like a TikTok video. Uh, but if you really are trying to like take it to the next level, I've always been the person who tries to show you well. It doesn't matter if you have money or not, but if you use better equipment to be able to do it, you, you have to find a way to do it. It's everyday objects that, that you can use. Um, and so uh, the treadmill, if you have a treadmill, don't turn it on. Uh, walk backwards on that one for five minutes and then do your workout. So that's variety. And... Yeah, try walking, uh, try walking in the rain as well. That's, that's kind of why I'm out here. I, I'm always talking about going outside and the benefits of 
going outside and, and, and the vitamin D from the sun, but going out and listening to the rain, going out and walking in the rain. Um, there's something cleansing about it. There's something soothing about it. Uh, we're always like in a rush. And so we don't really appreciate things like that. And it, it's nice um, to go out and enjoy the rain. Before the pandemic, actually, no. Yeah, maybe two years before the pandemic, uh, on one of my many trips to Sedona, Arizona, I was on a new trail called the Slimy Shady Trail. Which, uh, I'll be editing that one soon. And when I was walking, it was raining. Um, but the cool thing is I got my Airbnb uh, right by it. So I, if, if uh, we got really wet, we knew that we could, you know, quickly get back and change clothes and not be as cold and shower. And so we went hiking purposely, even though we knew it was raining. And, you know, it was beautiful. It, it rained and then it stopped. And we hit this one section where it was raining. And then the, at the same time, the sun was hitting perfectly in this little corner. And then this giant rainbow came out. And I had a picture of it. And I, I got it on GoPro. I'll be putting that on my YouTube channel. And it was like one of the most uh, best feelings I've had, like a natural high, but very super connected. Because prior to that, I was cold. Because we had already, we were already heading back. And then you just get this gleam of, of, of sun with rain at the same time and a rainbow overlooking the views of Sedona. Uh, it was just beautiful. So I highly recommend just I walk in the rain. The other thing is, uh, you know, I'm a big runner. And I remember uh, being a kid, I used to just love going out and playing in the rain. And then as I got older, you know, I stopped doing that. I, I think I just, I don't know what happened. I just didn't think it was fun and I stopped doing that. And uh, it was the year 2011 when I ran LA Marathon. And that year it rained. And before LA Marathon, I was playing basketball and, and I sprained my ankle. So I was going into it injured uh, with, a, with a bad ankle. And then like a knucklehead that day, I wasn't paying too much attention. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I kind of went off a little curb. And so I, I twisted my other ankle. Now I have two bad ankles. It's raining really, really hard. It's, it's windy. It's cold. It's my longest marathon to date. It took me about six hours, 56 minutes. Uh, people were falling, people were quitting, they were doing hypothermia, uh, a lot of people were getting rushed to the hospital. When they were quitting, they go into a medical tent and they give them kind of like a foil sheet that you wear. And I, I seen so many people going in there and I was cold and I wanted to quit. You know, and in, in my mind, I'm like, no one cares if you quit. It's just is all you and all these thoughts that I had to overcome just crept, crept up. And uh, I made it, you know, I needed medical attention after. Uh, that's the only marathon I needed medical attention after. And uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. But one thing I learned from that is I don't want to be unprepared. If you're just so, like, not used to nature, which is just rain and we're afraid of rain and we don't even go out and enjoy the rain, then let's say you are doing a race or, oh, it's raining. No, oh, should I not go for a walk if I don't have a treadmill? You know, the rain won't do anything to you and so I started training more in the rain and going for runs and, and thinking back to my childhood how I enjoyed the rain and going out and playing and you don't even have to go too far you know you could come home so you can change and, and don't get cold but go out in the rain or right now I'm just sitting uh, looking at the rainfall uh, so you're looking at the chimney but there's so many benefits just uh, for you know, what happens after the rain comes? It's, it's, well, depending where you live, but usually uh, there's a lot of fog in LA, so the, the skies get blue and the snow in the mountains falls and it's cleansy. So try using rain uh, and enjoying it and thinking back of to you how you were a kid and uh, just playing and, and having a good time. And then I can definitely tell you that in other races that it has rained, not the whole time, I'm definitely a lot more prepared. Uh, I'm not like, oh, uh, in shell shock, I could pretty much run in any weather. I ran in the day, I ran at night, I ran 
uh, early in the morning, I ran from dusk till dawn. You know, I ran in cold, I ran in rain, I ran in heat. You, you just want to be able to, anything you're doing, be prepared. And uh, don't get all shell-shocked when, when you're doing it. So try running in the rain. Uh, try walking in the rain. Uh, try connecting more with the nature. That is my very fitness tip for the day. So thank you, everybody, for joining. I have one more uh, show today, and then I'll be caught up. And that is about working out to Christmas music. That's right. I know a lot of people like like Christmas music, but the beats are kind of slow. I love music. And uh, in, in the podcast, so we're showing support. You guys obviously love workout music, too. It's my most popular episode today. So I want to provide you uh, some options to uh, be able to work out to Christmas music. And let's see here. Some new features here, so I'm trying to figure it out. And let's see, Lily is an audience, and she's saying she occasionally steps out to capture the feeling uh, you mentioned, Ray, in the rain. That, that's great. And because I know Lily uh, on here on, on Fireside, who is a creator, uh, and I think I did it right. Uh, she is not one who's big into working out, she's mentioned. And so it's great to hear that she does step out and enjoy the rain and, and go for walks. And uh, that's what that's what I re I will revert back to what I mentioned earlier. Don't make it complicated. Uh, complexity will probably keep you from doing it. Keep it simple. Think in your head. Three times a week, I'm going to go for a walk. And then do that for a while. See how you feel. All right. I've been walking 10 minutes a day. Now I'm going to go 10 minutes more. So now I'm walking 20 minutes three times a week. Maybe depending on your condition, you could run. Uh, and then, oh, well, I'm doing this. Maybe I should have some weight training. And that's how it starts. You get the snowball effect, but for energy, for positivity, and not so much like, oh, my body doesn't feel fluid. And, uh, you know, I feel stagnant. I feel... I feel like I want to go straight to sleep right after I eat lunch uh, at work. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining me. I do have a guest for Monday. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I haven't really tried too much because my schedule is hectic. And so for me to try and get a guest, I, and uh, so I've been doing the shows on my own, and I also love the opportunity to be creative, uh, talk about different things, and and then things happen and you go with the flow. Like I, I was going to show how to make a sled one day. And then the neighbor decided to put his Christmas lights up and there was banging and hammering and I couldn't do it. So I had to think of a different idea, uh, what I could do, what I could talk about on the fly and then do a show. So as far as creativity, it's helping me grow. As you know, I'm, I'm a coach and endurance athlete. This, this, this uh, podcasting is new to me, but I, I definitely... Uh, feel more comfortable each time I come on here. So thank you everybody for your support. On Monday, I will have Max, uh, who is a young kid, a young coach. Uh, we we kind of train in the same APG system. And uh, Man, if, if I only I would have been like as brave uh, to do, you know, some of the things he's saying on, on Instagram, you know, when, when it's not, it's more popular to do what everybody else is doing. But, you know, anytime I see like young people, uh, preaching, working out, and all these just uh, philosophies. It's impressive, and so I definitely want to give him a platform and uh, have some other guests I've reached out to, many surprises coming soon. And then I will be back for the Christmas music. So if you want to get my top five Christmas music songs, and I'm going to provide a link on the Fortune Cookie where you can listen to them all, and then uh, maybe in a future episode, you can come back and let me know what out of those uh, songs. But I'll give you my top five Christmas songs that you can actually work out to. So that'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific time zone so in about 45 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for joining. This has been Coach Ray, Athletic Definition. Santa, please, I deserve a gift this year. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I will see you a bit later.